Aider is AI pair programming in your terminal. I was recently working with Aider and as they have support for GPT-4 and the Anthropics Cloud 3.5 Sonnet as well, I've been using this for myself and my team as well for our daily coding and development purposes. And I'm really excited to show you how good it is. So you can either go with ChatGPT 4.0 or you can go with Anthropics Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. It's really up to you. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can install this locally and run this inside your terminal, whether it's a VS Code terminal or just a Git bash. But first things first, you will have to have a few dependencies that you need to install on your machine locally. On number one is the obvious Git. You must have a Git bash installed on your local machine. And then you must have Python installed as well. The latest version will be preferable. And you need to install pip, which is going to be the Python package manager. And you need to have an account with OpenAI so you can get their API key. But this is just optional. You can go to the Anthropic API platform and you can get your API key from Anthropic. But because I'm going to use GPT-40 for this one, I'm going to use the OpenAI's API key. And that is all the dependencies that you need. And with that said, let's get started with setting up or very own either locally on a machine. Hi, this is Shamrez and welcome back to Skill Curve. So we are here inside our VS Code. And all you have to do is just open up a terminal. But one thing that you have to be careful about is you have to switch the terminal from PowerShell to Git bash here. And then you can start running all the commands that are available on the GitHub page. So let's go back to the GitHub page. And if you scroll down a bit here in the getting started section, the first command that we need is the pip install ada jad. So I'm going to go and copy this one here. I'm going to go back to my VS code and here I'm just going to go and paste in that command and hit enter. What this would do is it would actually go on and install ada jad locally on your machine. As you can see, it started downloading ada jad. There you go. Ada jad is now installed on your machine. Now the next step is to move to a git repo. But if you want to start with a new repo, just say mkdir. This will make a new directory. And you can name it anything. So I'm going to go with skill curb and that's it. With that, our skill curb directory is now created. Let's move to skill curb. So I'm going to go and say cd skill curb. Let me just expand this so you can see more clearly. So right now I'm inside the skill curb repo. The next thing that we need to do is actually initialize this repo. So to do that, you will just have to do git. Then you will have to say init and just a period. What this is doing is it's actually initializing the current directory using the period flag just hit enter and now you can see that our repo is initialized once you're done with that all you have to do is just start Ada. so if you go back to their github repo you can see that you will have to choose from one of these models so i'm going to go with openai here so let's copy that what this would do is it would just set the openai's api key so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and paste it right here but let's just change the text from here and replace this with the api key so for that, let's go to the OpenAI's platform. And here I will be creating a new key and I'll just name this Ader. Let's go and create the key and I'm going to copy this key. Of course, I will be revoking this key before uploading this video. So let's go back to VS Code. I'm just going to go and paste that key here and let's hit enter. And with that, your API key is now set. Now, all you have to do is just say Ader and it will open up Ader for you inside your terminal. Now, if you're using Ader for the first time in a GitHub repo, it's going to ask you a few questions like if you want to have dot adder added to the dot getting node yes i want to do it because that's recommended and that's it it added that now as you can see that we are using gpt 4 over here and we don't have any files yet so let's go and start building stuff so the first example that i want to showcase it is capabilities with is going to be a tetris game so i'm going to go and paste in the prompt here just like that and the prompt goes like, create a fully functional Tetris game using Python that allows users to play the classic block stacking puzzle game with the graphical interface. And let's go and hit enter. Now, what this would do is it will actually go on and generate all the codes for this. And then I can put all this code inside different files in my GitHub repo and actually test out this game. So there you go. The whole code is ready for you. But if you scroll all the way up, you can see that you will need to install some dependencies first. So it's even giving you a full description like pip install pygame. This is a module that you need to install first and then you can actually import this inside the code and make sure that the game works properly. So I'm going to go and do that real quick. Just give me a second. I'm going to go and open up a new terminal here and I'm just going to go pip install pygame. So it's going to install pygame here 
And the next thing we want is to create a tetris.py file. So I'm going to go and go here. I'm going to go and say tetris.py and I'm going to insert the code here. Let's copy this code and just paste it right here. Let's save this. And the next file that we need is going to be the shapes.py. So I'm going to go and create that as well. And I'm going to go and copy paste this code from here and just paste it right here. And now if I go to the other terminal, I can see that my Pi game is installed success. So let's go back to the main terminal. And here now I can just go and go to the tetris.py file. I'm going to go and try to run this game now. And there you go. I can press any key to play. So yep, the game is working completely fine. This means that we can create fully functional applications using either in our terminal without doing much effort. Isn't that mind blowing? So as you can see, I just lost the game and there's even an animation for that. All in all, I think this is a pretty good example of how you can create fully functional applications using either and a large language model like ChatGPT 4 But this is not all. We're actually going to go on and create another application using either and see how good it actually works. So let's close all the tabs here. So now it's time for the second test. So the prompt that I've composed for this one is gonna be something like this. Create a Python application with graphical user interface that offers a comprehensive suite of productivity tools, including a to-do list manager, sticky notes, a calendar, and a reminder. So it's gonna be an all-rounder application where you can get the basic productivity tools. So I'm gonna go and test out Ada for this complex use case. So let's go and hit enter and there you go. It started generating the code and if you go all the way up, notice that it gave you a description for a module that you need to install, which is pip install tk. So I'm gonna go and just copy this, open a new terminal right here and just paste that right here. And there you go, the package is already installed. Let's go back to the main screen. And the next thing that we need to do is create these five files and start pasting the code right in. As you can see, the code is complete. So let's go and do that. So I'm gonna go and first create the main.py. So in the file explorer, I'm gonna go and say main.py and let's just copy all the code from here. And let's paste that right here. And one thing that I really wanna mention here is that make sure that everything has proper spacing because Python has indentation sensitivity. So I'm gonna go and say shift tab and this will align everything. Let's save this. The next file that I need to create is the todo.py. So let's go and do that, todo.py. Let's copy everything and let's paste that right here. I'm gonna go and align everything again and let's save this. The next file is gonna be sticky notes.py. So I'm gonna go and say sticky notes.py and let's copy everything. Let's paste that right here align everything and just save. The next one is going to be calendar app. So let's go and say calendar app.py and the next one is going to be reminder.py. And this is the last one. So I'm just going to go and copy this, paste this right here, align everything, just save this. So now that we have all the code and everything is settled, all we need to do is just run the main.py file. So I'm going to go and hit play here and there you go. This is your application. You have the to-do list, the sticky notes, the calendar as well as the reminders. So I'm gonna go and add a to-do list here. So let's say I want to do exercise, just add the task. So it's here. I can delete this task by just clicking here. So as for the sticky note, I can say that LLM reviews and add the note and the note will be here. The sticky note is almost like a to-do list, but the difference is just you have more capacity to write more in the sticky note as it is more detailed. As for the calendar, you can choose any date as it is 24th of July right now, but you can choose any date from here. As for the reminders, I can put up a reminder here. Let's say I want to remind myself to record and I can choose the time and date. I can choose the year. So let's say it's gonna be 2024. As for the month, I want it to be July. So let's just say July. As for the day, let's say it's 24 and let's test this out. So I'm gonna go and say 24. And just like that, you can add the hours, the minutes and the seconds and just add the reminder. But notice one thing that if you add a wrong date, it will give you an error saying invalid date format. So you must follow the format that it is showing you right here. Let's say I want to go with 16 and as for the minutes, let's say five and for the second, just zero, zero. And let's go and add the reminder. And this time, yep, the reminder is added. 
and it will remind me on this time, which is really great. Although the design and UI of this application is not that good, but the basic functionality is just mind blowing and you get the name as well, Productivity Suit. So yeah, we created the whole Productivity Suit within just a couple of minutes using Gator and we didn't have to do any coding. Isn't that mind blowing? To me, it is. And I think this is going to revolutionize the way how coding works and how we're going to approach coding in the future. I'm really excited for the future of development and AI. And I'm looking forward to more updates from Ada. And that wraps up our video for today. If you found this video valuable, hit the like button. Share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Ring the notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Where we will continue to curb your skills with the latest tech. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.